Congratulations. It is my privilege to share this wonderful milestone with you. I'm honored to be asked to speak to you tonight, and although I believe there are much more qualified alumni than me. After I had accepted Dean Dulling's invitation for this evening, he asked me about the largest number of audience I'd spoken to. And I said about five, 600 people. But I neglected to tell him that the content was to present my father's recipe for making homemade sour cherry infused vodka. <laughs> and it was to a group of MCI Metro's executives in a management offsite meeting. Come to think of it, that may be a, very, a lot more entertaining topic for you tonight, but perhaps another time. I'm also grateful for, uh, to Dean Dulling giving me the podium again. The last time he did so, I went over the allocated time by 45 minutes. So tonight I promised him to stay within my allocated time, and I promise you I will not take 45 minutes of your time. I would like to acknowledge three people that are here for me today. It's, uh, it's wonderful that you as graduates have your loved ones around you, people who've supported you. The three most, most important people in my life are here today, and they're right there. Stand up. My husband and my two kids. So my son gave up watching Oblivion with a friend tonight. My daughter gave up a sleepover with best friend. And I'm sure there is a soccer game being played somewhere around the world that my husband could have watched tonight on TV. <laughs> but tonight, tonight is your night. You must be thrilled to be here. Sarah mentioned all-nighters. That was going to be one of my points of, points of topics for to this evening as well. The exams, the all-nighters, the papers, senior projects, your thesis, it's, and all the hard work. It's all over and behind you until you get a job. As Dean Darling mentioned, I too am a graduate of the George Washington University. I received my master's in 1997. And it was a while ago when I sat in your chair. While I don't remember my commencement speaker, I vividly recall how I felt. I had my whole life ahead of me, a yearning for success, reaching my potential, and most importantly, paying off my debts. I've been thinking about the topics I can, I can cover this evening. And I was contemplating if you really want to hear another immigrant tale. I looked at some online commencement speeches, and I did some soul searching, and I realized that's the only story I've got. My story is not unique, but it's mine. And as I share my life experience with you, I, I will give you some advices based on my lessons learned. The first is to believe in yourself. You see, I emigrated to the state at age 15 in 1985. I left the war struck country, Iran, with lots of hopes. My highest hope was to have individual freedom and equal rights. My family had gone through turmoil since the 79 revolution, and that made me grow up very fast. Some of my father's friends were executed or jailed. And then I made a deal with my God, and, it, and that it was, if he ever got me out of that messed up country, I would make every effort to be the best I could be, do good, and always be grateful. Make no mistake, I have the, I have the utmost pride and tremendous love for my heritage and my upbringing. I just wanted to live in a democratic country. Thank you. Seems like there's some Persians in the crowd. <laughs> Growing up, I was inspired by some very exceptional people around me. My father believed in the strength of one's character, my mother in humility, my sister in pride and compassion, and the list goes on and on. They also believed in me. Having survived the bad fall as a toddler and being in coma for a day, and having survived typhoid fever at age 13, my mother always said that I was blessed by the angels. And I kept wondering why the angels were not able to prevent the fall or the typhoid fever. Nonetheless, 
My family has always been a great source of inspiration to me. They have kept me grounded while giving me the support I've needed in my life. I've also found inspiration through books. In those boring summers where we often had to take shelter in the basement when the Iraqi bombers would fly over Tehran, my only recourse was reading novels, and my mother made sure I had, pl my mother made sure I had plenty available at hand. So I landed in Alexandria in 1985, and I loved it. I attended T.C. Williams High School, barely speaking English, and then moved on to my college studies. Being the youngest of four, I was my mother's last hope of having one of her kids becoming physician. And as a good Persian daughter, I did give it an honest try. My pre-med studies lasted a year. I then decided to, on becoming an engineer, and my only criterion was a field where there were good chances of finding a job. I decided on, on electrical engineering because I had heard that it was one of the more challenging fields. My uncle, who was a practicing physician at the time, gave me one advice. And he said, you see, in this country, you have the opportunities and freedom to become the best or the worst you can be. You pick. So I had decided to continue to push myself and push the envelope. While in college, we got married, Sasan and I, at 25 and 19. I was 19. We were both working and, and um, we were both in school at the same time. We had high hopes and had decided to make it on our own, and the rest is history. Almost 24 years later, we've grown up together and now we're growing old together. The foundation I received as an electrical engineer, my family's support, and my work ethics have been my ingredients to success. And with all the confidence that had been placed in me, it would have been a shame if I did not amount into anything. So there I was, a young immigrant with high aspirations. Sounds familiar? I was never held back by pessimism. I was never told that I belonged to a historically underprivileged group, or there was a chance I would make 77 cents on a dollar to my male counterpart. Instead, I was told that the road to success would be a tough one and that climbing the corporate ladder was challenging and it missed some steps in between. And if anyone had asked me about glass ceilings, I would have said I would love to have, more, to have one in my house if I could ever afford it. And if anyone had ever mentioned my accent, I would remind them that my brain had none. So there I was, starting to believe in my capabilities. My next advice to you is not to take no for an answer. Like you, I was eager to join the workforce. I was driven and committed. I worked around the clock and always volunteered for more responsibilities. If things were not going well, I made calculated changes and I moved on. And up to this day, if I make a mistake, I correct it immediately. And if I'm not getting what I deserve, I speak up and I act. At 27, I was making $58,000 a year working as a manager at MCI Metro. A year earlier, I had requested to be considered for more pay and promotion based on my responsibilities and my peers' levels. I was, I was told to be patient um, because I was, I was the youngest IT manager at the time in that organization. Although I, had, I was managing multiple programs and I had 37 people in my organization. After waiting a year and delivering some flagship systems for the company, I brought up the subject again with my boss, who is a still a very good friend of mine, and I'm grateful to him for all the opportunities he gave me early on in my career. Again, I was told that I did not have the number of years on my resume needed for a justification uh, to go to HR. I had just had it about I had just had it with the injustice. I stormed out of his office, slammed the door, had lunch with Sasan, and submitted a, submitted a very dramatic resignation later that afternoon. Two years later, I was a director at Telligent. I, I was managing 120 people and was making double the salary of my MCI Metro. While financial gain has never been a primary motivation for me, getting what, what I deserve certainly has. I especially advise my female colleagues to speak up and stay engaged. And I see today that the number of female participants in the STEM field has increased. 
Congratulations. It's a wonderful and refreshing change from the time that I went to school. I think I was one of a dozen students in my class when I graduated undergrad in electrical engineering. So ladies, remember, remember to speak up and stay engaged. If you work hard, you have the right foundation to become whatever you desire to be. About a decade ago, I was talking to a successful business friend of mine, and I was telling him about my involvement with charities around the world to support underprivileged women and children. He admired my philanthropic aspirations, and he asked me what I had done for my, for my alma mater. In his words, he said, Gazelle, you'd be nothing without them. Thanks a lot, I replied. But afterwards, I thought about it, and he was absolutely right. So as you start the next chapter of your life, remember your alma mater. Remember to give back to GW and to your community however way you can. My corporate experience, coupled with my education, helped me with my ultimate project and the highlight of my career, which is being a business owner and an entrepreneur. And I promise you, everything you've learned in school will be put to test in real life. Entrepreneurship is a journey worth taking. And after motherhood, building a business has been the most rewarding experience of my life. And it was a risk worth taking. My, my next advice to you is to take risks. Take risks and live a life with purpose and good intentions. You must challenge yourselves. Work hard. Be fair to yourself and others. Learn from your mistakes. Ask for help and offer help. One's character comes through, not when things are going well, but when one is faced with roadblocks. You don't want to be liked by everyone, and God knows I don't think I am, but you're, you want to be respected by people who work with you. And remember to have fun. Remember to have fun at work and have fun outside of work. I've worked at least six days a week most of my career. I've enjoyed it and I've had a blast. The rush of getting things done building organizations, delivering systems, making an impact to the mission of my clients, all while having fun with friends, family, and loved ones. Up to this day, sadly for my children, I still dance like no one is watching, and I love it. As an entrepreneur, my husband and I ran our company, as Dr. Dean Darling mentioned, for 11 years together. He had started Paragon four years prior to me joining. Together, we grew it to almost 240 employees, and we sold it a year and a half ago. The road was anything but smooth. Twice, we were weeks away from shutting down operations and moving on. During the journey, we were faced with many challenges, from bad economic times, to fierce competition, to unfair partners, to moody clients. We did not give up. We believed in ourselves, our team, and our service offerings. We stayed engaged with our customers, employees, networking events, and industry partners. I specifically enjoyed participating in small business forums and often attended White House and congressional briefings where it came to small business matters. And in every event, I would raise my hand if I had something to say. One year, a few of our government agency clients told us some of our contracts may be reduced significantly due to budget cuts. That meant that contracts that we had won competitively and invested heavily in may have been taken away from us. And the cha this change in strategy could have impacted our small business tremendously. At the end of the day, the customer rules. And had they decided to move forward with it, we had no choice but to accept. But not without being heard. I took a dozen marketing material marched down to the Capitol, and I spent a full day going door to door and talking to our congressmen and senators' offices. And who would have thought? They actually listened to me. They followed up with me. They asked me subsequent questions. Afterwards, I felt I was heard and I had a voice. And after all, that's the most beautiful part of being an American. and we should all appreciate that more. Do I think I've been successful? Absolutely. I've been successful from the day I believed I was capable of making something of my life. 
You see, I define success as having perseverance, resilience, high integrity, and humility. And I define failure as being dormant and complacent. As the saying goes, if you fall down seven times, make, up, make sure you get up eight. And be prepared, because falling down is inevitable. Living with purpose and good intentions, it's a wonderful model, and it's the essence of our teachings to our two children. And remember that while the road ahead will not always be rosy, it can be a great ride. And in closing, I would like to wish you all a lifetime of health, success, good intentions, and hard work. Congratulations again on your accomplishments. In a few years, one of you will be here giving this, spe this speech for, your for the future commencement graduates. And hopefully, you will remember who your commencement speaker was. Have fun tonight and this weekend. Party responsibly. You've earned it. Thank you, Dean Narhari, and good evening to everyone. I'm hugely honored to be here tonight, and I couldn't be more grateful for all the help and support I've received along the way. I'd like to thank everyone individually, but we would be here until Tuesday. So to be brief, I will simply say thank you first and foremost to my loving family, to Professors Palmer and Vora for their hard work, and to the entire SEAS community, whose importance I've actually been reflecting on these last few weeks. The SEAS community is one of the greatest resources that this school has offered us. The last four years have been characterized by a lot of hard work, designing, building, testing, studying, calculating, spending hours in Tompkins. We've had interesting professors and challenging classes. We've had projects that will define the course of our careers. But what I've noticed most is what we've all built together, a community of peers. We are motivated, interested, engaged, and supportive. What got me here tonight was not simply a lot of hard work, though there was plenty of that too. It was overwhelmingly the collection of people around me. Whether it's as simple as showing up with coffee for a group before a long day in the lab, or as complex as starting a student organization to promote interest in engineering outside of class, I've known the graduates here today to be passionate and capable, but most of all cognizant that none of us exist in a vacuum in our new profession. In our four years here, we've grown because of the people around us. I think that's something to be proud of. I stand here today with a request for these graduates. Let's not lose this community. The group that has made the past four years so great deserves a place in our lives. We should promise to keep in touch, as our professors and parents are imploring us to do, and we should actually mean it. Let's remember what made the SEAS community great. We've been taught that engineering is not a discipline to learn or practice in isolation, and I don't think that stops being true when we get a diploma today. We have a unique opportunity as new graduates to bring our enthusiasm and interest to the companies and schools we go to next. Let's start journal clubs, join hackerspaces, start hackerspaces. But above all, let's not stop collaborating. We've built something great here, and there's no reason that has to end when we walk out today. There is much to be proud of and much to look forward to. So congratulations, class of 2013. We have spent a great four years together, and I'm excited to begin our fifth year together as a community, a different one than we're used to, but a strong one all the same. Thank you. Will all the honorees please rise? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, congratulations to the student award recipients. It is a tradition of the engineering school at the George Washington University that one member of the graduating class is chosen to address our celebration. This year, our student speaker is Amono Sarah Apoma. Sarah hails from Nigeria and is a 2012 graduate from CIS with a BS in computer science. She has just completed the fifth year master's program and is receiving her MS in computer science today. Sarah. To Dean Dolling, the faculty and staff of SEAS, parents, and my fellow graduates, it is an honor to be standing here in front of you today. I want to tell you all a very short story. About five years ago, I received 
the big envelope all high school graduates hope to get. I remember that day like it was yesterday, the rush of excitement I felt knowing that I had been accepted into the School of Engineering and Applied Science at the George Washington University. What a thrill it was. I'm sure I wasn't the only one who felt that way upon receiving the acceptance letter. Over the past couple of years at GW, we all have gone through different types of experiences, be it happy, sad, or life-changing. We have had a late night study sessions and several all-nighters. In fact, I highly doubt that there is one person here who hasn't pulled an all-nighter, especially during midterms or finals, right? But it wasn't all hard. Those trying times were accompanied with the support of our professors, families, and of course, our friends. Hanging out at the Starbucks near German Library, looking for new spots on campus to try out, basically looking for anything to help take the edge off. But no matter how challenging those times may have been, what kept us going was the thought of being here today, waiting to hear our name called, walk up on this stage, shake the hands of our professors, and face the world that lies ahead of us. Now you may be thinking, that isn't as easy as it sounds, going into the real world, as they say, or be it furthering your education. I want to pause and say this is where you should hear words of encouragement from me, telling you that you can do it. So long as you fight for what you want, you can get it. But instead, I want to ask you all a question. Do you really need to hear those words? My mom always used to tell me, the end shall tell. Look around you. This is the end of your undergraduate or graduate career. The end which speaks for itself. You have accomplished something not everyone can or has had the opportunity to. You persevered through it all, and although you may have had second thoughts at some point, you did not give up. You kept at it and got to be exactly where you wanted to be. Here, about to receive your diploma. So instead of words of encouragement, I want to leave you with this quote said by Vince Lombardi, Jr. The dictionary is the only place success comes before work. Work is the key to success, and hard work can help you accomplish anything. Today, we have accomplished something so great, but we have even greater things ahead of us to achieve. So I urge you to go out. Keep up the hard work, determination, and faith you've had in yourselves these past couple of years, so that in a few more years, when we meet again, we'll have even greater stories of our accomplishments to tell. Thank you. And to the class of 2013, congratulations.